Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brian, and welcome back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, we'll be diving into arrays. An array is a tool that you'll be using a lot inside of Unity. The big question, what are they? To answer this question, let's look outside of Unity and back in the everyday world. When have you first heard the word arrays? A very easy answer is solar arrays. For instance, the International Space Station has an oppressive solar array, but what does that mean? I'm not talking about an individual panel, but rather the entire collection of solar panels, the word collection being the key word. An array is a collection of similar objects. Take a leaderboard, for instance. You could say that a leaderboard is an array of high scores, that is, a collection of high scores ordered from highest to lowest. With that in mind, let's switch back to C-sharp. In C-sharp, when we create arrays, we create collections of a certain type. For instance, I could have a collection of strings, a collection of ints, and a collection of bools. Notice that none of the collections are mismatched collections. They are all of the same type. Arrays are useful for grouping similar data. Defining an array in c -sharp requires a particular syntax. First, you define the type like you would any other variable, but after the type, you add a pair of brackets. These brackets tell the c -sharp compiler that the variable is a type of an array. That is, it doesn't just store one value, but a series of values. Once you've defined the type as an array, you next provide the variable name followed by the equal sign. At this point, you have to decide whether you wish to set the variable in code or in the Unity inspector. If you wish to populate the array in the inspector, you must use the public keyword before the type and conclude the statement with a semicolon, just like you've been doing with normal variables. You'll see how to work with arrays in the Unity Inspector in the demo portions of this video. If you wish to populate the array in code, you have a couple of ways to do this. You can add all the values at once, or you could add them later. To add them at once, you first define the array, and after the equal sign, you put an open brace. The open brace indicates the start of an array. Afterwards, you put all the items in the array separated by commas. When you've finished adding them, you simply add a closing brace. Now, if you wish to add items later, you are required to define the size of the array. To do this, you create an array the same way you did before, only after the equal sign, you use the new keyword, followed by the type you are using. After the type, surround a number by brackets. The number indicates the amount of items you want the array to hold. So if you put the number three, the array can only hold three elements. Now here's the catch. You cannot resize the array. Once you have set the size of an array, you're stuck with it. Once you have your array created, you'll want to access it at some point. You access arrays by the index. The index is the order inside the array. But here's another catch. Arrays are indexed by zero, meaning the first element is stored at index zero. The second element is indexed at one, and so on. Just like accessing arrays, you can assign them by index as well. You must be careful to access an array with an index that is in range. Otherwise, you'll run into an index out of bounds error. The error simply lets you know you try to access an index that doesn't exist. For example, say you have an array of two elements and you try to access it by using index two. Since arrays are indexed by zero, you would actually be trying to access the third element instead of the second, causing an index out of bounds error. 
Let's see arrays in action. Okay, in this demo, we're gonna dive right into arrays. And to do that, I'm gonna select my scripts folder in the project browser, and I'm gonna click the create button, C sharp script, and then I'll just give this the name high score, like so. Now I'm going to double click this to open up my editor. The first kind of array that I'm going to create is an array literal. This just means I'm creating the array as well as supplying all the values to it. We're here, we'll do this right here, and we'll make this an array of strings. And we'll just simply call this name. So we'll put type string like so. We'll put our brackets. This indicates an array, and then we'll type names like so. Now I'm gonna use an equal sign and then an open brace after which I'll provide a series of names. Here are all the names of the people who work at Raiseware. Here you can see we start off with the open brace, then we have the quotation marks and put each name between quotation marks because remember, this is a type of string. And then we have a comma separating each one. After the end, I'm simply going to put a semicolon like that. And now I have my array of names. Let's print these out. So here you can see we have the people who work at Raiseware are, and then we provide some names. And we access the name by putting in the index within the brackets. And here you can see we're gonna have each name printed on its own line. I'm gonna save this and go back to Unity. Now I'm gonna select my cube here, and I'm going to remove my tip calculator. And next what I'm going to do is drag on my high scores onto the cube. Now I'm going to run this. I'm going to switch to my console and now I'm going to disable the cube. And here you can see the people who work at Raiseware are Brian, Ray, Christine, Sam, Mick, Vicky, Luke, and Chris. That's one way of defining an array, but here's another way. I'm going to delete this literal here and then I'll type the new statement followed by string and then within the brackets, I'll put an eight, meaning this is going to have eight elements in it. Now within my on disable, I can add these elements individually. I'm gonna save this and switch back to Unity. Now in Unity, I'll run this. So I'll select the cube, switch over to the console, and now I'm going to deselect the cube and here you can see we have the names printed out again. Now let's actually do this inside of Unity. And now what I'm going to do is delete these right here. Then I'm going to delete this new string like so. And to access this array in Unity, I'm going to type public. Now I'll save and switch back to Unity. When I stop my game, you can see here our high scores script you can see we have this names field. This disclosure triangle indicate that it, it contains other fields, or in this case, it's an array. So I'm gonna click this, and you can see now we have a size field. I'm gonna put eight, because I want eight fields in this. And now you can see it prints out eight elements. And here I'll add in the names. Now, unlike regular arrays, if I need to add another array, say for instance, we hire someone else, we'll put nine for a size and you can see it adds another element and it copies the last element into it. Conversely, I can also decrease the size of the array by lowering the size property like so. This gives the appearance that the array is mutable, meaning I can change the size at will but Unity is managing this for me. At their base level, arrays cannot change their size. What Unity is essentially doing 
is creating another array and copying all those values into it. Switching, switching back to Visual Studio, you'll see that the code is still the same. Let's run it. Here we'll switch to our console. And now we're going to disable our cube. And as you can see, the values of the names are printed out. Well, that's it for this screencast. But as always, we want to leave you with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create an array of high scores, then print out the average of those scores in on disabled. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.